put on an excellent performance tonight, none other than Danny Garcia. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank God for this victory. I want to thank my dad, Team Garcia, and everyone who came out to watch their fight. Um, hey, Brandon, don't worry about the credits, bro. I was champion for five years, and they still come here. They still keep talking about me. Until somebody could do what you do, bro, fuck them. <laughs> you the one putting that them blood, sweat, and tears in there, risking your life in the ring. So nobody can tell you nothing, bro. Keep your head up. Respect, respect, that, respect. <laughs> but um, as far as the fight, it was a tough fight. I knew Brandy was gonna come to fight. Um, he trained hard for this fight. You know, it's an opportunity for him to show the world that you know he's still a top fighter. It was a good fight until the fight. So the fight ended, um, me and my pop had a good game plan, you know, stand in front of him a little bit, move a little bit, and we did it, and we got the job done. And that's, that's basically how that went. What do you, what do you feel about that? I knew he was going to be in front of me. Um, he's a tough vet. Um, he's a good inside fighter. He had a better jab than I thought he had. Um, he, he had a pretty good jab, was good timing. Um, he worked good on the inside. Um, but, you know, we, we, we knew what he was going to do, so we just had to stay composed and just follow the game plan until till, till the fight was over. Danny. How were you able, it seemed like he wanted to establish his pressure, and this may be for, uh, for Dad as well. How were you able to, to calm the fight down and fight at your tempo, and he wanted to make, I, mean, I saw him trying to create traps for you, and you just slowed him down. How, how do you do that? <clears throat> I just use my lateral movement. I try to use my jab to the head, jab to the body. I try to stay tight on the inside and just um, just offset his, his timing, his, uh, his, his pressure. So. I think we did a good job of that. Um, I think he did a good job of fighting on the inside, putting pressure, and um, we just we just followed the game plan. Danny, congratulations on your on your victory tonight. You are known for your left hook, but you use your right hand a lot in this fight. Was that something that you used specifically for this fight? It's just how the fight went, or are you planning to use it more going forward? Yeah, um, in sparring, um, I noticed when, you know, when you find a guy who's coming forward, it's good to just throw a lot of straight right hands and a lot of punches straight down the middle because they're, they're coming straight towards you. So I was trying to throw the straight right hand and I was trying to use the jab to the head, jab to the body, and then it worked good every time I did it. Danny, you, you fought Eric Morales before, so you fought a, a Mexican champion before, but with Rios tonight, with the pressure and the inside fighting, did you feel like tonight, more than any other night, you knew what it was like to be in there with a, a real Mexican fighter? Oh, definitely. Um, I would say to this day, that first Morales fight, I think that was one of my hardest fights. Because I was young, he was experienced, he had a lot of tricks up his sleeve. But definitely, those... Um, the Mexican fighters with skill will come forward. That was a tough fight for anybody. Anyone else? There we go. Danny, great performance tonight. So just talk a little bit about that uh, border uh, interaction. You seem kind of heated. You know, I think that's the first time you really show that type of emotion post-fight. You just got done putting in nine rounds of work with Brandon. I mean, this it's the day. I, I told him at the Danny Garcia show, he didn't want to listen. He said I was in his backyard, but I told him he's from Ohio. So I'm like, I see you think you took too much punches, bro. Not, not in your backyard. <laughs> but it is what it is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know what's in his head. I won't. I mean, it was like the Kevin Hart situation when he tried to go on stage in the Super Bowl. <laughs> from bad timing, baby. <laughs> I love Kevin Hart though, but it's, time, it's the Eagles' time to shine. You feel me? And that was my that was my moment. Danny, what, what what's next for you now? Because you had uh, a question coming from. Oh, uh, you had Sean Porter in the ring. You had Errol Spence tweeting at you. 
you go in a different direction. What, what, what kind of direction are you looking to head into now? You know, it's whatever. At the end of the day, it's whatever. I know how the game works. You can want to fight who you want to fight, and it never happened. So, um, whoever they put in front of me, like my whole career, you know, if it's the Thurman fight again, if not, I fight somebody else. Dispense, Porter, I fight somebody else. Whatever happens, happens. I don't, I don't care. I'm a fighter. This is what I do. I've been fighting for 20 years. I've been fighting since I was a little kid. I fought the best fighters in the amateurs. I fought the best fighters in the pro. It's not new to me. Danny, when's the last time you, you had a, a shot that clean to, to end the fight? Do you remember? Um, Ross Alco, same thing. Wait, was it that fight? Damn, it was that fight. Shit, it was that fight. <laughs> Sad to say. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, one more here. Andrew, what do you think of the way he came back in? Huh? He hadn't fought in a while, and, and how do you think you responded and as far as following the game plan and being sharp? What did you think? No, you, um, Danny did well, you know, part of the game plan. I mean, he threw himself off a little bit, and Brandon was coming in because I didn't want that. I wanted Danny to dominate him on the, on the clinches and all that, because Brandon's good at that. He know how to use his head, he know how to clinch, he know how to, you know, piggy pack. That, that'll take a fight and frustrate you, but I knew how to keep Danny in the fight. Because if I would have let him slip out the fight, I would have I couldn't have brought him back. So I try, I try to keep him in the fight. I told him stay composed and don't let him do that to you. You dominate him. You do what you want to do. So I'm glad he listened. He's dropping his hand a little bit. His left hand is trying to hit him with overhand right. You know we worked on all that. We worked on leaning, leaning left, straight right hand down the pipe. Cause Brandon right there. So you know he did at the end. He did what he need to do. It was a great fight. You gotta understand, Brandon no slouch. He's got 35 wins, brother, 25 KOs with three losses. That's a record. You got to respect anybody like that. So we never took him lightly. So we knew he was going to come to fight. And we know we got to fight because Danny's 33 and 1. That one is, 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 is predictable. That shit was like, uh, that shit was some suspect shit. You know what I mean? There's a lot of politics with that bullshit calling him racist and all this shit. They fucking racist. You know what I mean? This bullshit gotta stop with the boxing shit. They putting the boxes down and all that. And he like he said earlier, it's about you guys. MMA don't do that shit. And they be having five wins and 10, 20 losses. And they still start. <laughs> and they still making commercials. What the fuck? And then the boxes get nada. They get bullshit. They get a finger. <laughs> You're a bum. Fuck that. Ain't no fucking bums. Takes a lot of work to come up here. Motherfucker that talk this shit never got, never never took a shot in the tip of the nose. That's what happens. They were bullied as kids. They took their money, because I did, I took their money. Anybody else? God bless y'all, bro. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. What a great night of boxing.